opened portal that I created all the way back at the start of this project. We restored the portal and lit it up. To be honest, it's kind of crazy to think that this is how it looked once upon a time in USW lore. We hopped through the portal to take a look at what naturally generating terrain was waiting for us on the other side. We came across some really awesome vanilla terrain and crimson forests throughout the caves and knew that the giant custom cavern that we'd planned would fit in here perfectly. Before clearing out the cave, I converted the nether portal to a more fitting colour and added new vines, since this was the underworld version after all. I decided it made the most sense to transform the USW's nether in a specific radius around where the island's ruined nether portal leads. So I got to work on the terraforming, which involved clearing out an enormous area and I even extended the height of the nether just for this section. The top bedrock layer looks pretty ridiculous from the outside, but luckily none of you guys will ever get to see that. Now obviously a giant cube cave wouldn't be all that immersive, so I did a bunch of terraforming to make things feel realistic, and this is already looking like something from Stranger Things. Anyway, since Minecraft's natural terrain generation in the nether can be pretty wacky, I thought it only made sense to have some fun with the terrain in my build. So with the basic cave ready to go, I whipped up some cool shapes for our floating islands where I'd be building some epic biome transformations. I had to head outside the cave to do this with the tool that I wanted to use, before hopping back inside to place these islands around the cavern, even using some of them to make stalactites from the ceiling, which we'll decorate a little more later in the video. To break up the red, I painted the walls with a patchy gradient before scattering around a few more islands and making a giant lava lake surrounded by pieces of terrain breaking away from the edges. With our backdrop all set, I started on the first biome transformation, the Crimson Forest. I really wanted to keep things feeling authentic to vanilla for this upgrade, so I tried super hard to just build larger, more realistic versions of the vanilla crimson trees. I placed my new trees around the floating islands on one side of the cavern, adding some large boulders as well as some lava pools. And in classic Minecraft style, I of course had to have some lava falls spilling over the edges too. And for the warped forest, I pretty much just followed the same process on the other side of the cave, since the two biomes are so similar in vanilla. So moving on to the next biome, we're tackling the Soul Sand Valley. Now you may have noticed that I've nabbed the skull that I built in my Desert Temple transformation. That's because I wanted to repurpose it to create an epic demon skull for the Soul Sand Valley. Since this biome is the only place that you can find fossils in the nether, and Mojang themselves claimed they came from creatures of the past, I thought it'd be awesome to expand on this lore with a build like this. Plus, it fits really nicely with the USW's own backstory on the 12 demons of the nether. So, Steph and I reshaped the skull, added some horns and painted on a new colour palette to make the remains of a really creepy, demonic creature to place in the biome. I then switched out the normal fire in the eye sockets for soul fire and made some little adjustments before placing the remains in the cavern, along with some giant rib cages and bones that I created earlier in the series. I also included some basalt spikes to break up the terrain a little. Plus it was a nice way to tie in the soul valley with the basalt delta biome. And it wouldn't be a true soul valley upgrade without scattering some soul fire throughout the biome. So moving on to the final biome, the basalt delta. Since this is so annoying to traverse in vanilla, and we already have plenty of crazy terrain in this cavern, I decided to keep things simple and make these areas a little more survival friendly. I built some stacked basalt rock formations, added some lava pools and scattered some blackstone variants, since in vanilla Minecraft it's more likely to generate here than in any other biome. And before we move on to our nether structures, I wanted to add some finishing touches to the cavern, firstly by adding some caves to connect to the vanilla environment, just in case you guys fancy exploring beyond this area. These caves look so cool on the walls of the cavern, and the giant stalagmites and stalactites make it a super immersive transition between exploring my cavern and the vanilla environment. And finally, to finish up the environment, I realised I hadn't actually added any glowstone, so I had a really cool idea of how I could incorporate it into the ceiling of the cavern. I tried out a bunch of different patterns until I found something that looked as though the ceiling had cracked revealing the glowstone above. This effect looks so awesome, especially with high bloom shaders. You may also find some extra gilded blackstone sources and some ancient debris tucked up high as well. So, that completes our environment and biome transformations. There are so many different areas to explore here, and to be honest, I think this will make a great place for hide and seek with some of your friends. So next up, we're tackling the Bastion Remnant. You may have actually spotted the red floor plans earlier in this video, and if you're watching closely, you'll have seen we're making one for each side of the cavern. So, I blocked out the main structure with coloured concrete. Usually I'd use wool, but <laughs> it's a bit of a fire hazard here in the nether. 
And as you can see, I've based the shape on a real life bastion fortress structure. Because let's be honest, I don't think any of us really know exactly what this is. Anyway, with the main structure blocked out, I decided that I wanted to do something organic for the entrance. Since the Bastion is home to the Piglins and Piglin Brutes, I thought it would make sense if one of the creatures of the past, referenced by Mojang, were a race of giant piglins, who perhaps was at war with the large demonic creatures whose remains also lie in the Soul Sand Valley. To honour their ancestors and ward off thieving adventurers, the present day piglins incorporated these remains into their entrance in an attempt to protect their precious gold from you guys. And there are lots more challenges waiting on the inside. Next, I painted the bastion with a gradient, adding some lava falls dripping down the walls, and built the entrance, lining it with soul fire braziers. Next, I added more fire braziers, finishing up with a giant soul fire flame roaring up top. I also switched out some of the giant piglin skull blocks, because Steph said the horns looked like a moustache and we couldn't unsee it. My guy literally looks like Mario with a nose ring. Moving on from our moustached piglin, for the interior, I divided everything up and built a long menacing corridor for the entrance, with lava falls, hanging chains and etched patterns on the floor. I wanted to make sure that this structure had some challenging obstacles like the vanilla one, with some tough areas to traverse if you want to get your hands on all of the loot. So, with the help of our dev Godda, we made some parkour courses through lava pools on each level. On each floor you'll find a different parkour course, which will get increasingly harder as you progress further up the bastion with better loot available on each level. Eventually you'll reach the top floor, where you'll find the ultimate parkour challenge lining the wall. And if you can make it to the top, you'll find some epic loot up for grabs. So with our bastion complete, I mirrored it over to the other side and tidied up the surrounding environment to wrap up our bastion remnant upgrade. Even though this is more of a simple upgrade for me, I love how this turned out, especially with the expansion of our Minecraft lore and the parkour challenges throughout the interior. So moving on to the biggest structure in the nether, we're tackling the nether fortress. As usual, I set everything out with coloured blocks to plan the structure, and I actually based the main segment on the same shape as our bastion remnant. Obviously, vanilla Minecraft's nether fortress is mostly bridges and walkways, so I wanted to make sure I captured this in my transformation, planning lots of bridges to different towers, which will each contain trials and challenges of their own. I also connected the fortress up to a platform beneath the nether portal with a bridge, which I'll later on be damaging to fit with some of our lore. I got to work with the detailing and painting, opting for this really cool gradient from black concrete powder to red nether brick. This platform area was looking a little too bland, so I decided to repurpose my Jungle King statue from the Deep Dark transformation and use him to prop up the overhanging terrain. To change things up from the bone remains scattered around the cavern, I decided to create this spooky devil-like statue, also combining it with a lava feature. What do you think his story should be? Is he a lost soul condemned to serve the nether? Or perhaps he's related to the demons whose remains can be found in the soul sand valleys? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Moving on, I continued the detailing and painting along the main bridge, which I'll be adding some damage to later on. I worked my way over to the main fortress, detailing the small bridges and towers at the front, also tackling the interiors as well, since everything needs to be survival friendly and immersive to explore. Even though I followed the same formula for building these bridges, it actually took a long time to add all of the details, especially since I'm doing all the physical building alone. Plus, I included nether wart farms, spawner rooms, and lava fall rooms. And these are just the medium sized towers. Honestly, this place is vast and really brings some new challenges to exploring Minecraft's nether fortress. In the largest towers, you'll even find dungeons infested with mobs and villagers trapped in cages. If you search hard enough, you'll even find where the piglin guards chill out and take their lunch breaks when they're not keeping watch of their prisoners or scouring the nether for gold. Anyhow, I finished off painting the external towers with that dark, creepy gradient and added some epic fire braziers to finish them off before turning to the main, central segment of the fortress. I quickly fixed up the plan and started adding crenellations to decorate the entrance. 
Heading inside, I plotted out a grand hallway from the entrance, lined with giant pillars and lava falls, before heading back outside to finish up the exterior, as I don't want to spoil the rest of the interior for you guys. For the front of the building, I thought it would look awesome to incorporate lava into the design, so I built a network of channels to allow the lava to cascade down the fortress, and of course, added some more of those fire brazes that I designed earlier to bring the whole build to life. And to go out with a bang, I built a giant nether star to sit atop the fortress. This star is said to empower the piglins who rule over this realm, and it is believed to have dropped from a huge wither who once roamed the nether along with the other giant creatures that are now mostly extinct. These creatures were known as the 12 demons of the nether, with each race empowered by a different negative trait from the overworld. For instance, the wither is known in USW lore as the demon of greed. So, tying in with all that epic backstory, I decided to build some giant cages to place around the cavern. These cages were used by the Piglin clan to capture the last surviving ancestors of the 12 demons of the nether, but they broke free and escaped, now wandering the nether and capturing the souls of Minecrafters like you guys. Their empty cages are scattered around the cavern. I wonder if you can find all 12. When the demons escaped, they also broke the bridge to the nether fortress in all of the commotion. So that'll be another challenge for you guys to tackle when you head to the nether for yourselves. And that just about wraps up our spooky nether transformation. This place is so creepy, you guys. Even though I said that this was going to be a smaller upgrade, it's ended up pretty massive. So with the nether done, I still had tons left to 